Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the second seminar on cooperative game theory applications to power systems. Uh, today we are going to discuss more features about the solution concepts and take a look at some real world uh, case studies. So let me start with a brief overview of the last seminar and cooperative game theory solution concepts. Um, as you recall, we defined what is a coalitional game and uh, we need to set two things to define the game. First is a finite set of players n to describe all possible coalitions and uh, the characteristic function nu that describes these coalitions in terms of savings or uh, costs or be some benefits. And we also discussed the rationality conditions. You may see two conditions here. The coalitional rationality, that means that uh, each coalition should get at least as much as it can get on its own. And the global rationality, that means that the total value that is being allocated equals to the value of the grand coalition. And we uh, uh, took a look at how these concepts work for simple examples. You remember the gloves examples, the dinner example, and everything was fine. So at this moment, we should discuss some issues about this concept. And first note, uh, you should be careful when using um, these conditions because they differ for different games. And uh, this depends on what you are allocating, the cost or uh, some benefits. And if you allocate some benefits, some gain that the players get together, these kind of games are called value games or profit games. And this means that players together should get some more than separately. And uh, there are some games in terms of cost, cost games. And for these games, you should uh, reverse this condition or invert the characteristic function. And uh, you may also, ch uh, you may often check your logic. For example, in case of allocating costs, you should check that for each coalition, the value that they're allocated is less than their own value because you're allocating costs and everyone wants to decrease its own costs. So this is the first note. And the second question that we need to ask uh, is the core of the game uh, always non-empty? The core uh, is defined by this set of rational uh, constraints. And unfortunately, the answer is no. There is no guarantee that uh, the core of a game would be non-empty. And therefore, we need to discuss a few more concepts. And the first concept is called super additivity. You may consider two sets of uh, players, S and T, two coalitions. And please notice that they do not cross. So they do not have any uh, players in common, completely independent coalitions, S and T. And super additivity means that uh, it says that the value that uh, this union, this coalition S plus T gets is greater or equal to the values that players get separately. And in other words, uh, super additivity means that in cooperation should be some level of synergy. It is not simply a sum of their uh, gains. But this is not strong enough condition and uh, therefore we introduce here the second definition that is called convexity. And the convex game says that the value that coalition S plus T gets should be greater than the value of coalition S plus the value of coalition T and minus the value of their intersection. This is, uh, this is a more strict, uh, mo a stronger condition than <coughs> super additivity. And it means that there should be some significant level of synergy. So S plus T is uh, much greater than uh, S plus T minus their intersection. And if we find a game that uh, satisfies convexity, then everything is good because this means that uh, this game has a non-empty core. And moreover, it is proven that the allocation concept as a Shapley value, uh, the solution will be in the core. So uh, you, you probably get the idea that once we uh, formulate a, a certain game, a certain co coalitional game, we need to uh, understand, is it a convex game? Is it a super relativity game or not? And this would be helpful for further analysis. And uh, let's go further and introduce an equivalent formulation of convexity that I like more than the previous one. And in this case, to introduce it, imagine that set S and T, they, uh, uh, it happens that S fully belongs to T. So it is S less than T and a set of players S fully belongs to T. And in this case, super relativity formulation says that uh, the marginal contribution of player I uh, to coalition S should be 
uh, less or equal to contribution of the same player I to coalition T. So this formulation tells you that it should be more beneficial for players to join the larger coalitions. And uh, this effect is some some sometimes called a snowball effect. Uh, marginal contributions to coalitions with more players brings more benefits. No, not less, not less. And this is the condition by, by what you can uh, check every game, every characteristic function that you got. You may uh, program this condition several times, as many as, as uh, many players you have, as many scenarios you have, and identify is your game convex or not. If it's convex, you shouldn't worry, and all the concepts as the Shapley value will uh, work okay. Uh, if you wonder about the necessary and sufficient condition for the non-empty core, uh, there is a bond driver shapley theorem that proves that uh, game should be balanced in order to have a non-empty core, but we will not uh, cover this in this lecture. It is not so useful. And what I want to mention here is a special class of games that is called market games. And uh, market games definition comes from economics, econ economic studies when people modeled um, they considered set of uh, producers, and producers collaborate to trade some commodity. And usually when you trade more commodity, you get more benefits, so it becomes optimal to trade as much as you can. And it is proven that if, uh, if producers have certain cost functions, if I'm not mistaken, convex conf cost functions, it is proven that uh, such uh, games, market games, always have a non-empty core. So you also may check is your game a market game or not. And also let me recall some solution concepts that we discussed, the Shapley value, the most popular solution concept that considers marginal contribution of each player to each possible coalition. You may see here the difference, uh, the value of coalition with player i minus the value without player i. And we uh, calculate by this formula the weighted sum of the contributions and uh, therefore we may just plug in the information that we have about a game and get the allocation solution by the Shapley value. And also I mentioned the nucleolus. It is not such a straightforward approach. It is based on the axis of a coalition, the difference between uh, what coalition has on its own minus what it is allocated to the players of its coalition. And in order to calculate nucleolus, you need to uh, combine a set, a series of linear optimization programs where you want to minimize the dissatisfaction of the most dissatisfied coalitions. And this approach is also not uh, so straightforward. M moreover, this formulation depends on, uh, again, what, what do you have, a value game or a cost game? And therefore, I uh, recommend you, if you by any chance want to calculate a nucleolus, refer to this paper. I think it's rather funny, common mistakes in computing the nucleolus, but it helped me a lot not to repeat some mistakes. Okay, I think that's all about uh, overview of cooperative game theory solution concepts. And now let's uh, go to the Northeast Asia case study. This is the main uh, case that I study in my thesis. And it is also often called the Asian super grid in the media. So this is the scheme that we study. You may see six countries here, Russia, uh, Mongolia, China, North and South Korea, and Japan. We gathered a lot, of, a lot of information about this case from some papers, technical reports, our own engineering judgment, as a reference, the, the closest study, I think, was done uh, in 2016 by Takashi Atsuki. He also wrote a paper in energy policy about interconnections in the Northeast Asia. And we suggested this dashed line uh, uh, with certain parameters, certain costs that could be optimized among the countries. And first, let's briefly talk about the data. Uh, this is the forecast that we found for these nine power systems for 2035. And uh, what you may see here that uh, consumption in these power systems differs uh, a lot. For example, this is the highest consumption is in uh, North China, I believe. And you may see that it's almost reached 600 gigawatts. It's a lot compared to other systems. Uh, the red line represents Japan and uh, other countries. You may see that uh, r three power systems of Russia that are considered here, the Far East, Siberia, and Sakhalin, they are not so significant in terms of capacity. Uh, then we identified uh, generation sources in each of the power systems and composed this approximation of the cost functions. And here again, you may see how uh, big is the cost function, the capacity of uh, North China. And uh, this red curve representing Japan, you may see that it is higher than anyone else. This means that in our um, 
that, that we suppose in our conditions that Japan will have the highest electricity price in the region and it will be the main power uh, importer. And this small uh, green power systems is Russia, not, not so significant, but you may notice that it is supposed that because of the Siberian hydro power plants, Russia will have the lowest electricity cost and therefore it will be the main power exporter. Okay, then we plug in this information to the optimization model and we want to solve uh, the transmission expansion planning. And this is the result for the grand coalition. That means that all the six countries cooperate and they agree on building the optimal power lines. So you may see the capacity of the lines that are built and power flow directions. Some of the power flows are reversible. For example, in the line 1.6, you may see that depending on the season, the power may, may flow in both directions. But uh, some power lines are built up to the maximum and it is seen that there is a strict power flow towards the Korean Peninsula and uh, Japan. And when we compare... Uh, yes. What about the capacities of those lines? Uh, uh, they're not a result of solving some optimization. Optimization, yeah. I, I set, I set uh, the limit 5 gigawatts maximum and you may oh, see okay. that yeah, the se that's several that's lines fine. reach this limit. So some yeah, lines yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay. I think this is, this is a reasonable limit of 5 gigawatts considering nowadays technologies uh, yes, and then we just compared the case of no optimization and the grand coalition and the difference in objective functions in cost savings means $7 billion per year. But this is for six countries. And the question of, that we pose here, uh, why we use cooperative game theory, we ask how, how should these savings and these costs be split among the countries. And therefore we introduce players, and as you guess here are six players, one player per country. Uh, like for Russia, Mongolia, China, uh, North and South Korea, and Japan. And these players should agree somehow. And the first step, as I explained to you, we need to describe all possible scenarios, all possible coalitions of players. And we can plot this by this bar chart. You may notice that there are 63 possible scenarios, as we discussed, 2 to the power of 6 minus 1. And this plot itself shows us a lot of information. The upper chart shows us generation plus investment cost per year. So basically this is our objective function for each uh, possible scenario. Here we see only investment without generation cost. And uh, below we see all possible combinations of players in the 63 coalitions. And we may study uh, scenario by scenario in order to get some insights. For example, scenario number six, when all players cooperate, the grand coalition is indeed the best, the least cost scenario for the region. But is it a stable cooperation? Um, will the players agree to be in the grand coalition? In order to answer this, we need to consider more scenarios. For example, uh, a, a bright example here would be scenario number 18, Russia and Japan only. You may see only Russia and Japan cooperate here and they get uh, less savings, but they need to split their savings only among two of them. And maybe it will be more beneficial for them to not cooperate in the grand coalition, but only to build uh, this bilateral interconnection. And this is the issues that we'll be considering uh, next. And also you may uh, consider all the scenarios like by countries. For example, uh, what coalitions uh, do Russia do you participate? Do you that it's a non-convex uh, coalition, yeah? What, what you just said. Uh, if it's... A few more slides, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I want to say that there are many ways to analyze this figure and get some insights. For example, we can consider all coalitions that Russia participate and see, uh, and if Russia uh, breaks this agreement, these coalitions uh, simply do not exist there. They become infeasible. And you may see that Russia is uh, an influential player, right? But you, then you can exclude coalitions with Mongolia and see that not so much will change. And by doing uh, this analytically, you may conclude what countries have what influence on the cooperation. But there is no need to do this manually. You can plug in this information into uh, Shapley value, for example, and get the following allocation of savings. And here you see that indeed Russia gets 32% of savings and we can say that uh, Russia is a very influential player in this coalition. But an interesting thing is that the next most influential player is North Korea with 29% of all savings. And how is it possible? This is a small system with not the cheapest electricity. And do you have any ideas why North Korea is such an influential player here? No? Maybe for Korea, so that we survive the electricity for the Korea to... Yes, right. So 
cooperative game theory do, do, doesn't lie to us. <laughs> it shows us the true conditions, and we see here that North Korea has not economic advantage, but it has topological advantage. If it breaks an agreement, there will be no power flows to Korean Peninsula and Japan. And therefore, even though this is a compar comparatively, comparatively small power system, it turns out that North Korea is very influential and very important player that should be paid accordingly. Yeah, but there are, there are the constraints that you impose, like five gigawatts, yeah? Yes. So if, uh, what, if, if, if you return to the map, yeah, so you see, if North Korea breaks the agreement, then the line 1-9 doesn't exist. What you can do instead is you can build another parallel line to Japan. And if you consider that possibility, then maybe North Korea becomes not so influential. Yes. Th this is another way of analyzing this. You may, cons you may just uh, imagine what happens if China says, okay, but there is also possibility of building line here. And if you change this, the cooperation will change. But yeah, we, we analyze these given conditions, but there are many ways of uh, uh, changing uh, the data. Okay, so. so. Let me ask about the constraints. Yes. What is the scenario when you have only one dot uh, uh, hole? For instance, the last one. One dot. Yeah. Where, where okay, the, the first one, only Russia. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, what, what does it mean? The no cooper this means no cooperation. No invest, almost. I think no investment and uh, the no savings. Ah, so this all, is all, all these scenarios. So you have the, the last one. Yes. The, the last one means only. Them lead to the maximum, uh, no, 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 no. The last ones are, for example, cooperation between Mongolia and no, North no, Korea. It's just an empty set. Last, no, the very last one. The very last. Uh, no, one only one means no cooperation. Yeah, but so, so but it is equal to the first one don't have cooperation if there are two countries that are separated geographically, also. like the, the last draw. You see, for example, Mongolia and DPRK. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't matter if they cooperate, right. it's just an empty right. set. The, the model sees this topology that yeah. they, we say they cooperate, but the model says but it's nothing. savings zero means yeah, nothing no happens. cooperation. Okay, the, the Shapley value allocation that showed us bargaining power, we see Russia is a, a good power exporter, gets some savings, North Korea is also important. And then we can plot this uh, to s analyze the core of the game. And uh, you remember the barycentric coordinates, meaning that a uh, certain ver vertex for a player, for example, this is Russia, means that Russia here gets all the savings. And the further we move in this space from the point R, uh, the, the player gets less savings. And we cannot plot six players game in the 3D space, but what we can do, we can fix less influential players in the Shapley value point, for example, and plot the remaining ones. So here you see Russia, North Korea, China, and Japan. And uh, you may see that the core is large enough. There is enough space for bargaining. And uh, the allocation solutions, the Shapley value and the nucleolus lie inside the core, and they are not closed uh, enough to the borders. So we may say that this uh, certain cooperation is stable even under certain data per uh, perturbations. And there are many ways also to analyze this uh, uh, figure by analyzing certain projections. Imagine that you are looking at this uh, figure from the point C. So you are working uh, in this dimension, Korea, Japan, Russia. What you will see, you will see this uh, uh, parallelogram, I would say hanging over the point of North Korea. And how you can interpret this, you, you may say that North Korea is not getting more power in this cooperation because Russia exists, because uh, uh, coalition Russia-Japan exists, this, this condition exists, this uh, restriction, and therefore Korea cannot be the most influential player because there is also an option of um, exporting power from Russia to Japan. So you may get really interesting uh, insights from uh, the figures of the core. And some people ask me about plotting such figures and I would say that I would recommend you to use the package TUG uh, lab for MATLAB, I think from 2004. And uh, this, mean, this package it means transferable utility games lab. And if you uh, give to this package your function for three or four players cooperative game, it would automatically plot the figures for you, some allocation solutions. So I recommend you to use this uh, package. Okay, and another interesting plot marginal contributions of Russia to the coalitions that it may participate. So you remember the list of possible combinations, and here we highlight the coalitions with Russia. So here nothing exists because Russia 
doesn't participate in these coalitions. And let's study this particular uh, plot. We can compare certain coalitions, for example, the Grand Coalition and the same coalition but without uh, China. And we see that Russia contributes uh, $4.4 billion to this coalition, but $4.5 to this coalition. And another situation could be the coalition of uh, Russia, China, Japan, and uh, North Korea, and the same coalition but without China. And again, uh, Russia contributes more to the coalition with less players. And uh, the question is wh why this happens and what does this mean to us? And as, as, you, as you guessed previously, this means that the game is not convex. And this is the bad news for our analysis. Even though we uh, study power markets, optimization, the game turns out not to be convex, probably because of the cost functions and the nature of transmission expansion planning, the limits on the power flows. So we should be careful when studying such games because under certain data, it is possible that there will be no core, no cooperation, and uh, cooperation would be not, not stable. Okay, and we need to answer a few more questions for this case study. Uh, the first one is, we found some allocation of the savings and of the costs, but can we find, can we suggest a solution to the allocation of the cost of each particular of these lines? And the problem is that there is no unique solution. Um, there are many combinations of this investment. And let's uh, see that, for example, this green volume here uh, means uh, the share that Russia should invest. And we can just say, okay, Russia invests in this line with uh, Japan and uh, a bit in this line uh, with Sakhalin. But then Russia has no, no more money to invest in this, under these consumptions, under the Shapley value solution. And uh, who should invest, therefore, in other lines that are entirely in Russia? And probably the game theory would say that China and North Korea should invest there. And these results could be fair theoretically, but politically it's, uh, it's almost impossible. And uh, we found this feature and there is a need to uh, developing new mechanisms of cooperation to deal with such issues. What should happen if countries do not want to invest abroad? And also you may wonder why not to implement game theory again and combine m multiple games, uh, each cooperative game for each of these lines saying that in what scenarios the line participates, what countries are interested in this line, and therefore, again, maybe by Shapley, split the cost of each line. But this wouldn't work because the game is highly non-convex. And as an example, you may see that the line 2.6 is not built at all in this uh, optimization plan, right? But in some, uh, uh, some sub-coalitions, for example, where there is no line with Mongolia, this line is built to certain capacity. And this could lead uh, to strange uh, results that are not implementable, that some countries should, uh, should compensate other countries because they didn't build certain lines, and it's also very uh, disputable. So there is a need to investigate some mechanisms of how to, s how to split the cost of each particular line if you want to answer this question. And also, we, as I said, we calculated the allocation of costs and uh, savings by Shapley value, but remember that uh, the generation cost in Russia increased because Russia starts pr producing more power. And uh, the uh, cost in uh, Japan decreases, so there are some savings uh, happening in, uh, right in Japan, and countries should compensate each other. And the question is, can we calculate the money flows, the ways of compensating the countries? And uh, we even c composed another optimization model over the uh, initial one when we um, formulated money flows among the countries and marginal costs. And we tried formulating, s you see here, bilateral contracts. And we found for that for this particular case, bilateral contracts would not work because game theory and op optimization of money flows tells us that there should be some flows uh, of money among the countries. But if we calculate the contracts, we will see some strange results. For example, Mongolia is uh, exporting power to China. Its cost is 61, marginal cost of Mongolia. Uh, cost of China is 66, but game theory says that Mongolia should sell power at the uh, price $52 per megawatt hour, less than its own cost. And also very disputable results here that show that bilateral contracts, contracts would not work if we want to split uh, the savings and compensations by the, by the game th theory principles. And the solution could be if there is a certain coordinator, some in intergovernmental entity 
that would uh, collect all the money and then redistribute it. And uh, yes, uh, we published uh, this paper in the Energy Economics Journal last year. So, so I encourage you to read the paper if you are interested in all of these concepts and features that we found here. Okay, that's all about the, um, the Asian Super Grid study. And then uh, next topic that we considered is called manipulability. Uh, as you remember, we discussed that uh, game theory highly relies on the accuracy of the information. We assume that we know everything about the power systems, their cost functions, and so on. But in reality, we may not know this uh, information. And moreover, some players may try, uh, we, we can say, behave strategically or cheat. They can submit different cost functions. And uh, recall these two power systems example from the previous uh, lecture. The uh, system A with uh, cheap electricity cost and system B with uh, more expensive electricity cost, and they are going to build a 400 megawatt line. And these uh, bold uh, black lines represent their true cost functions. But system A, for example, may say that, okay, I agree to cooperate with you. Uh, we, we are going to use Shapley value or any technique you want, but you know, my, my cost function is not this, it is a bit higher. In other words, system A says that I'm not such a cheap uh, power system, my cost is higher. And what happens if they cooperate on these conditions? They will get some savings, they will allocate them by the Shapley value, but system A will end up with having some additional benefits. We can call it a delusion volume of savings or, or something. And the same works for power uh, importers. System B may say, I am not such an expensive power system. I, my, my cost is uh, much less, and uh, let's cooperate using this data, and therefore I'm ending up having some uh, hidden hidden benefits. And uh, this is, uh, again, the scheme uh, of the Asian supergrid. And here I highlighted uh, the roles of the players in the cooperation that we got uh, impo uh, power importers, exporters, yeah, Japan, the main power importer. And please notice that North Korea, under this optimization, is a transfer country. So it simply transfers power towards uh, a more expensive uh, Jap Japanese power system and it is paid for this according to game theory. So let's see what happens if these players start uh, behaving strategically, they start changing their uh, uh, claimed cost functions. And uh, as we discussed, Russia should probably increase its uh, cost function bid, and Japan should pretend that it is not such an expensive power system. And here we, we see the plots. On the horizontal axis, we see the cost function deviations. If we deviate to the left, this means that the country submits the lowered uh, cost function. And if we do deviate to the right, this means that the country pretends to have a higher electricity cost. And uh, a vertical axis means savings allocation, and the, the final savings that the countries get. We can take a look at Russia first, the green line, and see that indeed there is this uh, green arrow. It is beneficial for Russia to claim that its cost is a bit higher. But then something strange happens, you see that this cost is not growing, it starts somehow swinging here, and then it goes down. And my question to you is, why do you think this happens? Why this allocation of savings to Russia is not growing like this steadily? Why it starts decreasing? So the export uh, amounts start to decrease because according to the new distribution, uh, it's not beneficial to buy from Russia? Yes, because Russia is not the only power exporter in this uh, region, and if Russia starts deviating a lot from its true cost, pretending that it is expensive a lot, then nearby we have Chinese power systems. It, it and runs out of its market power. It, it, it is <laughs> losing the share of market, right. Yeah. And, and it is an interesting uh, result that we see that it's not beneficial to cheat infinitely. Yeah, cheat a lot. And we, we plot these uh, curves for all the countries. You may also see Japan, the reverse figure, uh, Japan pretends that it is not so expensive, but here we also see an interesting bend here, and I can explain why this happens. So this is the figure when Japanese power system uh, deviates a lot. It pretends that it is not so expensive. And what happens that this line 5-4 uh, between Korea and uh, Japan, it disappears, because it is not optimal anymore to build undersea cable with the countries that have ex uh, equal uh, marginal prices. 
But uh, we, we can think that if, if the, line, the, the entire line 5.4 is lost, that the cooperation should be much worse. But for Japan, look, the savings of Japan continue increasing. And this is an interesting uh, insight that tells us that for some countries, it may be benef more beneficial not to build so much capacity, but to build less capacity and to trade only with Russia, but at much better conditions. So, yeah, this is a, an interesting result that we published in the IEEE uh, PowerTech conference the, uh, last summer. And uh, also plots of what happens if all the countries behave strategically simultaneously in their own beneficial directions. And here, the problem is that for uh, only for Russia, the main power exporter, and for Japan, the main power importer, it is somehow beneficial to deviate. And for other countries in between positions, it is better not to cheat on their cost functions because they may get simply additional uh, losses. Okay, and the last uh, uh, part of my talk for today, uh, the recent results that we obtained, uh, they are called incorporating cooperative game theory principles into the transmission expansion algorithms. And I like to start this uh, part of my talk with this famous quote by the second world chess champion, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Lasker, who said, when you see a good move, look for a better one. And in terms of transmission expansion planning, I think this could mean that if we see some optimal plan, maybe we should look for another plan that is better from some other points of view, maybe from cooperation points of view. And I will explain you what I mean uh, in a minute. Last lecture, I, I showed you already this example, the three power systems. Just to recall, system A has the lowest electricity cost function, system B is an expensive one, and system C is in the, in the middle conditions. And this is the minimization model. We minimize uh, generation cost plus investment cost, and we start launching this model for all possible scenarios, like no cooperation, the grand coalition. Please notice that all the lines are built up to 100 megawatts. And uh, for scenarios A, B, A, C, and B, C. So we analyzed all possible scenarios, and then we can calculate the Shapley value, the nucleolus, the equal sharing point, and you remember this is the core of this, uh, of, uh, of the cooperation in this game, the equal sharing point, Shapley value, and nucleolus. And I referred to some studies that did uh, the same for the power systems. And the question here is, can we do better? And can there be some problems with this uh, approach? Well, Cooperative game theory says that if the solution is in the core, then all the countries should be satisfied enough with the allocation. But in reality, the situation may be different. There may be some mutual mistrust or some issues, and countries may have different um, expectations of what they should, how they should cooperate. And you may notice that system C here is the less influential player. It is allocated not so much even by the Shapley value, and uh, the core is rather distant from system C. So what if in reality system C says, I do not agree to cooperate on such conditions. Yes, your, your techniques are, of allocation are good, but I just don't like that I'm not s such an influential player here. And, the, and uh, therefore the, the entire cooperation will be broken. So in order to uh, s uh, deal with such cases, we suggested a reverse engineering approach. We would like to ask, okay, what should be the transmission expansion plan in order to make the cooperation more stable. And here by this animation, I want to show that we are trying to solve all possible scenarios of cooperation simultaneously in a single optimization model. And therefore we use uh, karush kuntakar conditions to represent each scenario. And uh, by this way, we formulate the lower level problem. And if we solve it as it is, we will get the same uh, scenarios, the same optimal scenarios that we already discussed. Therefore we say that this uh, lower level may be restricted by the upper level that we call cooperative game theory principles. And here we may add any conditions into the uh, bilevel optimization model, the core of the game, and also an interesting condition that we didn't discuss, uh, haven't discussed yet, that is called the maximum surpluses of players. And uh, the maximum surplus of player I over player J says what can get player I if not cooperating with player J, if joining some other coalition without player J. And sometimes this um, concept is called uh, bilateral threats because uh, players may make threats against each other. And here we say, okay, let's 
let's equalize all of these surpluses, let's equalize all of these threads in the cooperative game. And we solve this bilateral model for the three power system case studies. And first, look here, look what happens. Line one is not built up to 100 megawatts anymore. It is built to 35.1 megawatts. And now we look into the core. The, the entire bargaining set, the triangle, ABC, it shrinked, it decreased uh, rather significantly. So this means that there are less savings of this cooperation. But the core, the structure of the game became uh, more balanced and the solution uh, is close to the equal sharing point. And this is an interesting idea that is close to the sanctions approach. We say that if you want countries to cooperate more equally, we shouldn't allow any optimal transmission expansion plan. We can, uh, we can restrict building of this line between uh, the best power exporter and best power importer, not allow it to build up, up to 100, and therefore we'll get suboptimal solution, but it will, be, um, it, will be, it will lead to a more balanced cooperation. And I think this is an exciting idea. And uh, the last case that I'm going to show you today, um, the same conditions, but the four power systems. And here, uh, a bit different cost functions. System A and system B have the highest electricity cost, and system C and D uh, have a rather low electricity cost, and therefore they are, going to, they are going to export power to A and B. And also an interesting feature is that system B is a bit more expensive than system A. So if cooperation happens, system B should be the main power uh, importer. And additional uh, constraint here that systems C and D that are going to sell power, they do not have infinite power to sell. We say that they have only uh, 110 megawatts each for, for the export. So they cannot export infinite amount of power. And again, we launched the optimization model, the scenario of no cooperation, the grant coalition, and other scenarios for four, four systems, there will be uh, 15 scenarios in total. And we see that uh, total savings reach $10,000 per hour, about 4.1% of savings, and this is the optimal power flows. And we see that it makes sense, lines five and three are built up to their maximum, and all the cheapest power from systems C, uh, C and D goes to the most expensive power system B, and this makes a lot of savings. Uh, but the question is, is this a good transmission expansion plan? And indeed, in terms of cost, this is the, the best, the least cost transmission expansion plan. But I would tell you that in terms of cooperation, uh, this plan would be a disaster because uh, I would argue that system A will be significantly underestimated in the grand coalition. Because in the grand coalition, it brings almost no contribution. All the power systems would like to trade with power system B and get savings here, and only the remaining 10 megawatts flow to system A. But this doesn't mean that system A is a useless player, because in other coalitions like AC, uh, AD, and ACD, system A is very important player, and C and D would like to trade with system A and get savings together. So we see that there are two important players, A and B, but A is, I would say, depreciated in the cooperation. And we can plot um, the yes, we can plot the solutions of uh, this game and the core. Let's let's zoom in and notice that indeed the core is significantly small in this cooperation, and it is very distant from point A. And it is so distant that I don't know. Ca can you notice? But the Shapley value it falls out of the core. So if someone of you would like to study this case, you will you will find that the Shapley value is not in the core and some solution concepts would simply not work and the cooperation would be not stable. So we, we see that indeed system A is underestimated in this coalition. And then we launched the bilevel optimization model uh, saying that systems should have equal bilateral threads and we get suboptimal result. And first let's check what happens with the capacities. Lines five and three are not built up to their maximum anymore. And instead these lines have mo much more capacity and this suboptimal plan tells us do not allow to trade so much power with system B, rather allow to the power to flow to A and then to B. So include the, this uh, participation of this uh, system more in the, in the cooperation plan. This will lead to savings decrease 
from 4.1% to 3.8%. But let's take a look at the core. First, notice that here is a dashed tetrahedron and uh, the solid tetrahedron, and the new bargaining space, the new tetrahedron, this new pyramid, it shrinks a bit because there are less savings on the table. But the structure of the cooperative game changed dramatically. You may see that the core is significantly large here, and all of the solution concepts, the Shapley value, the equal sharing point, they lie inside uh, in the core. That means that this plan is much more stable for the power systems to cooperate. And I find these results amazing, and I hope that you see how much space for research here is when you implement game theory in some areas in power systems, how you can study the po possible cooperations. You may not even uh, use game theory as an exposed analysis, but you may embed these principles into your optimization model. And a few words about future plans. We found a report of the Inter-American Development Bank uh, with, uh, uh, with very interesting data for power systems in the South uh, Latin America. Uh, for example, here I show just some data for Chile that we found there are hundreds of generations consi considered for each country. And we would like to uh, repeat our analysis for this case study and also implement the bilevel optimization model with equal bilateral threads to see what should be the optimal plan and what should be the suboptimal plan, but uh, that leads to a much more balanced cooperation. And we are still working on this case study. There are significant um, computational issues and uh, we would like to write a paper to transactions of power systems. So far the draft is called what we talk about when we talk about cross-border transmission expansion planning. Um, so I think I gave you a lot of insights and motivate you to use game theory in your own studies. So thank you for your attention. I cannot solve this yet for Asia where with six players. I sold it for four players, but for six players I cannot solve it. Yeah, but two players. Yes, because, because you need to solve all of this by level problem as simultaneously as a single uh, optimization problem. And this means that you need to solve all of these scenarios together. And you represent them as karosh kuntaker conditions, but then you get some complementarity constraints multiplication constraints, you remember, of the dual variables and certain conditions. And you cannot just plug it in in Gurobi, for example. You need to modify it somehow, linearize with maybe big M approximation. And if you, uh, and it, it becomes a mixed integer linear program that is hard to solve for, um, for many uh, binary variables. And if you consider four power systems, you need to solve only 15 scenarios together. And these constraints above of, of it. But if you plug in six players, you get 63 of these problems together with a lot of binary variables plus these constraints, and it simply doesn't work right now. We need to decompose it somehow, yes. And for Latin America, it's, it sh if for sure, it doesn't work right now. And there is another issue. Sometimes like maybe you don't find a feasible solution when you want to set like this bilateral thread have mm. to be equal for everyone. This is an unknown territory of research because you don't know what you're looking for. Maybe there is no solution because for some cases you say players should be equal, but equal may, be, may lead to no lines at all or some, some invisible states. And I, I ran a solver uh, one day for four days and it reached some level, but the gap was 2% or something. It's, it's not good, I think. And then it was checking all possible combinations of binary variables, not moving for four days. So. Maybe it's infeasible, maybe there are some better solutions, we don't know. It's a hard problem. But for three and four player cases, uh, fortunately, we can get some insights.
if you're constructing that to have the uh, optimal uh, optimal power flow, and you construct them, and then one player, which is very important, who is very important, decided to play a different game, you can change lines. Yes. Right? So, and if you s spread the uh, powers and weights of players more or less equally, it means that uh, they disappear one player or changing the rules by one player is not so uh, dramatic. Is it, is it right? What you're talking about, you're talking about several stages games or maybe dynamic games. And here I considered only one snapshot, only one static snapshot of what happens before constructing the lines. So they, s they sit and discuss what lines to build. And it's, I, it's hard to say what happens if you consider several stages. Then, as you say, first they decide what to build, then they build, and then they maybe leave collisions and do not trade energy. It's hard to say. I think it w there will be some complicated solutions. Isn't that uh, the, the suboptimal solution where the weights are more? Or less no, suboptimal is that is optimal solutions. Optimal solution says build here 100 megawatts. Suboptimal says build here less uh, power because you need to make players more balanced in their in their influence on the game. Th this is the suboptimality that I'm talking about. But this is just. Uh, preliminary estimation of a project in a single snapshot. So, so yeah, la last lecture I, I gave you some links uh, about game theory. And today I mentioned this TUG lab in MATLAB. So if you have any idea how to implement it, you, you can just watch it quickly or try experimenting, plotting your characteristic, uh, giving your characteristic function to the to the MATLAB package and just analyzing what's going on in your cooperation. Is it good or not? Maybe this already will give you more ideas how to implement it. Okay, thank you.